Hey, how's it going guys? ag 2 byte here and this is my video on should you buy the 2017 MacBook Pro now. Uh, I'm dividing this video in two sections. One is the story time of how I got my hands on this product and two is the review itself. So story time. Okay, so I was sitting in my room all alone when suddenly my phone started ringing. I picked it up and on the other side I hear someone saying do you want to make a MacBook video? And I was like, hell yeah. So that's how I got it. Okay, now the review. So let's start with some of the things that MacBooks have been really good at doing and starting from the design. I mean, I've used a lot of Windows computers on my day, but MacBooks have by far the best design, at least as far as I have seen those. It has that single metal unibody construction, uh, it is very thin that is one very big factor of why the design is so unique and it feels very premium in the hand which it should considering it is a premium laptop excellent build next is the speakers of all the laptop speakers that I have heard and I have used the MacBook speakers have the best audio quality it's not about like the bass or it's not about the treble but the clarity of sound even at max volume is absolute nuts there's no distortion right there and it's it's just fantastic speakers Okay, now the trackpad. Uh, I was kind of skeptical about the trackpad because of the large size, but having used it for a while, uh, I seem to like it more than I thought. Because MacBooks are also known for the trackpad, the tracking experience is really great. Great button mechanics, great gestures, overall a great trackpad. The display is the Retina display from Apple and this is really good, like it gets really bright and goes really dim. But because a lot of Windows computers are coming in with like higher and better displays, it is just very hard to distinguish between a MacBook display and a Windows display. The ports on this this is a MacBook, so there are two Thunderbolt ports on this side and two Thunderbolt ports on this side with the headphone jack. The battery life is also great. Uh, you can get up to like eight hours of battery on this, which is almost uh, equal to an entire workday. And because it charges through USB-C, I like it a lot. Now, the main reason I wanted to make a video on this at all is because of the performance on this thing. So this is the last year's model with dual core i5 and 256 gigabit of SSD, which is kind of like the mid tier in the range. This year's model, that is the 2018 models, have uh, the eighth gen CPUs, which are four cores. And I've said this before in my HP Pavilion X360 review. Uh, by the way, if you have not seen that, boom, it's right there. Uh, go watch it. I've said this before that the 8th gen CPUs actually crush 7th gen CPUs when it comes to multi-core applications. 8th gen is significantly better than the 7th gen CPUs. Now to like run the stress tests on this, I use two specific applications. One is the Geekbench 4 and the second is Cinebench and I compared it with my own daily that is the Pavilion X360 and you can see a lot of performance difference because of the CPUs. Now the 2018 MacBooks have not changed the RAM. They are still using low power uh, DDR3 instead of DDR4 so if that bothers you it is there. The drive speeds on this is also fast. The thermals on this is kind of a mixed feeling on this. Like if you use this for normal applications and normal stuff uh, there's almost no heating but when you use this for highly CPU intensive tasks the fans kick in and the back of the panel gets really hot. This is mainly because this is a very thin laptop and that does not facilitate a uh, good air flow inside and outside the laptop. The other thing I don't like about this is the keyboard. I mean the keys are backlit, they are well spaced and they are large enough to hit comfortably but because of the very low travel uh, I mean they feel very mushy and they feel like I'm just hitting on the surface. Uh, that's just not the way I like keyboards to be on a laptop. So I am probably going to be using my daily 
keyboard and giving it more preference here. Now the touch bar, I have mixed feelings about them. I mean, one side it is really cool, like being able to scroll through the entire timeline at once and control the brightness and audio with it at the same time is kind of really cool. But also on the other side, you always have to like bend over in order to find the particular objects on the uh, touch bar and in order to use that, which just puts your focus from the screen to the keyboard way more often. So that's it. In my opinion, you should definitely go for the 2018 MacBooks because of the upgraded internals and the upgraded keyboard. But the choice is all yours. Now, at this point, I know that there are Windows computers that can just simply crush MacBooks in terms of performance, but the MacBook sales will always be higher than the Windows PCs because of you know what I'm talking about. Okay, that's been it. Thumbs and subs if you love this. Feel free to share it with your friends and let me know in the comments what is your take. What do you think of uh, the 2018 and the 2017 MacBooks in general? And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. Okay, before you go, a quick shout out to my friend who gave me this laptop in order to make a video on it. Thank you, guy. You're so awesome. And yeah, that's it. See you guys next time. Bye.